What is the most unethical thing you've been asked to do at work? I worked in a well-known automotive garage chain. Quit my second day on the job because while I was doing an oil change my manager told me to take out the customer's air filter, rub it on the ground outside, and show it to the customer so they believe it needs to be changed. I changed an air filter myself an hour before I took it in for an oil change and I was suggested to replace it because it was dirty. I showed them the receipt, and they said well, the entire system makes it dirty. Go in for an oil change, and they try to sell you a new car. I'm in IT. I was asked by an executive to delete sexually harassing emails he sent to a receptionist from our exchange server. He thought they were private and she was talking about suing. He sent this request over email. I sent it to our HR slash investigative units. You're a good person. I was asked to ignore 15 open 50 gallon drums that were filled with used phosphoric acid sitting out back of a workshop next to a stream. In the middle of a city. Heavy rains and hurricane winds tipped a few over one night, boss dumped one out on the ground because he needed the drum. When I quit I called the city on their asses. What molarity? Used to work in event management and was asked to ignore fire safety violations on a regular basis. One time, we hosted a funeral for a sort of local celebrity, with 3,500 people in attendance, at a venue that was licensed for 300. It was frighteningly obvious that any sort of mass panic would be absolutely disastrous, so two of the staff members decided to go behind management's back and call the police. Another time, the boss at a venue refused to repair a broken heater in the middle of winter, with outside temperatures well below freezing. He told staff to simply use the gas oven to heat. I worked graveyard at a gas station. The owner came in all shit-faced one night and we were chatting. We talked about benign things and I mentioned that just found out I was pregnant. The first thing he said was good then I wouldn't have to wear a condom. I was so taken back that I didn't say anything. He went on to ask me if I had tattoos any place that he couldn't see. Then he commented on my necklace. It had tiny handcuffs on it. He asked if that's how I liked it, handcuffed. After all of that and me refusing his requests politely, he said how much money do I have to get out of the ATM to have you tonight? My response was he'd better go home to his wife and kids before I called them to let them know where he was. He threatened to fire me. The next day my manager pulls me aside and asks what happened. Then he asked if I would just keep it to myself. I told him I would if he'd take me off graveyards. That's how I got to keep my job and work better hours. I could make a list but we'd be here a while. I used to work in a senior home which claimed to be independent living for the extraordinarily wealthy old. And let me tell you that place was a prison. Kitchen was regularly below health standards and the place was a goddamn ripoff for residents. Our boss's stepmom moved in and was unable to move, and liability wise we weren't able to help her with anything, however boss would make an exception calling it above and beyond care. Duck that if she fell we all knew our ass was on the line. Also illegal petty cash boxes and hundred of off the book expenses for the boss. My buddy used to keep the books there and he actually gave up on asking how much he was doing that was illegal. Be very careful about what senior homes you send your loved ones to. Not me personally, however I was an assistant manager of a sports bar a few months ago. The owner's son slash GM of my store allowed an 18 year old to serve alcohol, 19 is the minimum in my state, and she failed to cart and served an underaged person who got in a wreck, her car was totaled and she sustained severe injuries but lived. The owner's son called the other girl who was working on that shift, who was of legal age, and told her verbatim, I want you to go home and practice saying in the mirror, I was your server and I carted you. She thought she had no option but to go along with it and I had to be the one to tell the server what her boss asked her to do was commit perjury and that if she did it, she would go to jail, have a record, and wouldn't be able to so much as get a job at Walmart when she got out. Duck that guy trying to ruin another person's life because he made a horrible mistake. The manager wanted me to clean the bathrooms but he was being kind of weird so I said no. Turns out a homeless person smeared shit and blood all over the walls. I told him later he was required to get a hazmat team to take care of that, I'm not risking getting any number of diseases. He just got some other room to do it. The amount of factory managers that want the light curtains, area scanners, and other safety features disabled on their machines in the name of speeding up production is pretty appalling. That shit's there for a reason. And if I disable it my ass is on the line if slash when your employee gets killed. I work in documentary production and part of my job is to do annotated scripts for big international networks I'm sure a lot of people here watch. 
This is where you'll have to give references for every single line in your script, to prove to the network what you've written is 100% factual. There was a line written by the scriptwriter, director that was not quite factual, due to the way it was worded. I suggested the line be reworded but he was adamant to have it that way, so of course the network came back to us and said either change the line or find a more concrete source. I searched and searched and couldn't find a source backing it up because of course the line was not factual. The director asked me to make nice with one of the experts in the topic and have him sign off on the line as a fact. I refused to do it, but the director went ahead and did it himself and the line made it into the final film. I get very frustrated every time I see the film on TV and hear the line. Cut an employee's hours so that he dropped a part-time status, that way the company, a more accurately that store in particular, wouldn't have to pay the cost of his insurance. He had recently just got back from having major colon surgery and was deemed a risk. The worst part was I needed this guy to work full-time in department and I had a whole team of people itching to take vacation since we worked the holidays shorthanded. Anyways, joke was on them. Immediately after I was told to do this I reached out to a rival company and jumped ship within 2-3 to three weeks. They ended up having to give dude hours once I left. That's a happy ending. Good work. I haven't ever been personally asked to do anything illegal, but I work at a workers' comp insurance company. The amount of employers who won't report employee injuries is staggering. I've had family members call, sobbing and begging for us to pay medical bills for injuries that occurred at work, but they can't report the claims so there's nothing we can do. We have employers who tell their employees that it's too late to report and they think they're just Saul. Guys, if you ever get injured at work, it has to be reported. There's no such thing as too late, your claim needs to be reported. I used to work in construction as a fire protection services inspector. I would say I was asked to ignore something dangerous about one out of every three sites. They also thought nothing of asking me to ignore it like someone else has before. I'm talking about things like an entire sprinkler system not actually connected in a brand new building, fire exits that don't exit, alarm systems that evacuate the wrong floor when smoke is detected. Apparently I was a bitch for refusing to issue a fire safety certificate until errors like this were fixed, things that usually take about an hour to fix, which I was happy to wait and watch them do. I was asked to sleep with the health inspector. Personally, I would have just killed the health inspector with a poison Krabby Patty. Sometimes Spongebob isn't the same as real life. Years ago, I was working at a local pharmacy. The owner had always seemed like a revenue above all else kind of guy, often ranting at his farm techs about not making enough money. One day we had a patient come with with a prescription for an expensive HIV medicine. So, I try to fill the prescription but noticed that our inventory for this rarely filled drug was expired. I was filling out the forms for new inventory when the owner saw what I was doing and told me to fill the prescription with the expired medicine. I tried to explain but he silenced me with a glare. I looked to my co-workers for support but they averted their glances. I ended up filling the prescription but to this day I feel ashamed for not taking a stand against it. I quit the job a week later. Lie to customers. Repeatedly. Was sales role. The one thing I love about my current sales job is that I don't have to lie to people. It's a rare thing. Same here. It's nice to be able to tell a customer that our product will straight up not work for them if it won't. If they're adamant on buying it after that I'll still sell it but I make it clear that it won't work and why. We would get a lot of stray cat dumps, and as you can imagine it's very costly but we did it anyway because you can't run an animal hospital and not love animals. Cats don't have MX cards. Some strays were not very adoptable, we had a senior cat on a lot of meds that suffered seizures, and weirdo wire haired chihuahua that took a very long time to warm up to people, she bit, but had no teeth and a house cat that had feline aids. We had them for years. The owner was bought out by a corporation. The first thing the Corps wanted to do was bring all the strays, even the residents to the Humane Society. We ducking rioted. It took a year to get them out one by one without causing too much upset but I tell you this, none of them went to a shelter. I worked at a medical practice and the doctor would just throw medical waste and bags of used needles in the dumpster out back instead of properly disposing of it. I still don't understand why, he could have lost his license and got slapped with thousands of dollars in fines. Just goes to show, even if you graduated from Columbia Medical School, you can still be a total ducking idiot. I don't know about where you were but I was actually surprised how cheap it was to have medical waste disposed of when I had to look into it. It's cheaper than the fines everywhere.
So, so stupid. Not me, but my dad was asked to commit fraud in order to keep the company he was working for afloat. Ended up doing it and accumulating $16 million in fraud over the course of 10 years. I assuming he was jailed or you're not meant to say these things ha. Huh? Yes, he was jailed. He cooperated with the feds though, so he got less time. It would suck if I blew that secret on the internet. Working at a bar and restaurant. Cut the mold off these strawberries. Do it quick, we need them for the daiquiris. Sometime later, you're cutting too much off. I worked for a packaging company that made the pop-top caps for bottled water. They asked me to investigate altering the design of their cap so that it couldn't be reused. The idea, scheme, was that if they invented a pop cap that would pop up but not back down again they could market it to the bottled water companies as something that would force people to drink their product in a single sitting, and therefore be more likely to purchase another one later in the day, and prevent people from refilling the bottle from the tap because the lid would never close again. It was only half-heartedly thrown out there at a meeting but everyone looked a bit uncomfortable about it and luckily it wasn't pursued. Which is just as well, because as someone who thinks bottled water is a rip-off and bottled water companies are wasting shitloads of plastic, I would not have been happy working on that project. I was asked not to hire black people or out of shape people. Safe to say I quit not long after. But out of shape black people were hired instantly. I was asked to blame a client team member for a mistake I made as there was a financial implication to my company if it was one of our team members who was at fault. Didn't consider doing that once though, one above the person who asked me and told him it was my fault and I think it actually worked to my benefit long term. As a manager, tell my 16 year old co-worker he wasn't allowed to drink water while he was working the fryer in the summer, because a customer saw him taking a sip and said it upset her. Yeah, safe to say I didn't do that. As someone who has experienced severe oil burns, he probably shouldn't have been drinking water simultaneously while working the fryer. Keep the hot oil and the water a few steps apart, yo. Perform tasks I was not at all authorized for. I'm a CNA and I can't tell you how many times a family member of a patient has demanded that we do the nurse's work, or the physical therapist's work. Some of it I knew how to do in basic, but if I would have gotten it wrong and hurt my patient, it would have been on me. Someone asked me to remove the password from their dead daughter's laptop so they could see if there was any pictures on it. Apparently the daughter had tried to rescue her boyfriend who had been dragged out to sea, neither could swim, both drowned. I'm my own boss, so nobody made me, but boy was it an ethical conundrum. I was asked to be happy for getting underpaid. I was asked to schedule my bathroom breaks as I was going to the bathroom too many times during a day. They probably just didn't want to have to run the webcam 24-7. For me it was because I was working out and drinking a lot of water. The worst part is the explanation they gave me. We were given 10 minutes away from the yard desks outside of lunch and break. When I my boss sent me a message, they said I had signed out 7 times for a total of around 8 minutes. When I pointed out the 10 minute thing I was told I was signing out too much and to schedule when I had to pee. Background, busy fast food restaurant right at the end of lunch rush. There was some bread sitting on the counter and my manager asked me to put it in the cabinet where it went. As I was putting it away, a customer came up to me and said, Excuse me, but that bread was on the floor, and someone picked it up and set it on the counter. I apologized and moved it back out of the cabinet, and asked my manager about it just in case the customer was confused or something. Her response? Oh, just wait for the customer to leave and put it away once they're gone. Nope nope nope. Slash r slash subway. Support a program of exporting goods to Iran that may contravene international sanctions. No one at the company seems quite sure. Did you work for the Bluth company? I may have committed some light treason. Round a p-value from 0.051 to 0.05. My work's pretty tame. Photoshop competitors' products and put our logo on them. Photoshop inaccurate details or features on products. Put logos proudly proclaiming proudly made in the USA on products we imported from China. Pirate software. Not me, but a fellow colleague who is a manager near the top of the chain. Approach the group of Peruvian employees and essentially force them to work on Sunday. Take OSHA out to the casino and buy them off. I was an adjunct professor at a community college. Two students completely plagiarized their final exam essays, 
a research paper with half a term's worth of work. My syllabus, backed by the department, stated that any and all plagiarism would result in a zero on an assignment. Student A accepted as zero and the overall grade dropped C to a D student B's grade dropped from A to B, and she returned that afternoon with her mother to speak to the dean. Later, I was called to a meeting with my department chair and the dean of faculty about student B they said she made questionable, potentially damaging comments about my character and insisted that I make it go away and let her resubmit the paper she had entirely copied from Wikipedia and crappy mommy blogs. That was seven years ago, and make it go away still rings in my ears. Was this the worst thing I've ever experienced? Of course not. But the fact that a college student could cheat, lie, and disparage me and get away with it all with the school's support makes me sick. Uck. Ask to lie on my timesheets. Not report an injury formally because the GM didn't want their percentage to go down. Thanks for listening to another episode of Redditex. Subscribe and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any stories. Feel free to share your own stories below in the comments. Have a good day.